Let's shift to the Seahawks yeah. for a little while here. We, we've talked about the possibility that Russell Wilson will be traded. Let's say he stays. Yeah. What is it that the Seahawks need to do above all else by way of personnel acquisition to make the team better this offseason? I still think the defense is the number one thing I look at that needs work. Hey, let, like offensively, let, yeah, you know, do they need another running back in the fold and the offensive line a little bit better? Certainly, okay. But but I still think when I look at them, the biggest thing is their secondary. Hey, I like the two safeties. They got no cover corners in Seattle. That that to me is their biggest issue. They have nobody that can you can go wait. It's a big play. We need to play man-to-man, -man, and we need to lock some people down here on third and four. That would be the number one issue. That, and listen, the pass rush thing's still real. They got a lot of good defensive linemen, and, you know, I love Jerron Reed on the inside. I think he's a baller. Puna Ford does a really good job for them. But, you know, guys like LJ Collier, a first-round pick, uh, you know, Carlos Dunlap, again, are good football players, but not like, you know, not the guys we've seen up there in Seattle where they can just, you can go, are, are you really going to leave them one-on-one -on -one all game long? I don't know about that. You know, that's what made them great back in the day. They had two or three of those guys at, at certain points. Right now, I don't know if they have any of those guys. So it, to me, as defense is still the biggest issue personnel-wise. And, you know, another issue they're going to have is this Jamal Adams contract extension. Uh -huh. How much does he want? How much right. is it going to take? How much do you feel compelled to justify the investment of two first-round picks to pay the guy what he wants? This trend that I don't like of making these big trades, whether it was Laramie Tunsil, Jalen Ramsey, and then Jamal Adams, multiple first-round picks. Yeah. For a guy who doesn't sign a new contract on his way through the door, it puts so much leverage on the side of the player. And, and if, I'm going to flip the hypothetical around, if they would trade Russell Wilson, all of a sudden you're going to have Jamal Adams sounding a lot like he did when he was with the Jets. Well, maybe. I, I think, I feel like Jamal Adams is pretty, you know, bought into what, what, they're, what they're doing up Not there. if he's not winning. Well, not if he's not winning. Well, Got to win. You're right. Got to win. You're right. Got to win. It's going to be scary. There, there's no doubt. But Pete is going to, you know, sell to him, hey, listen, Russell, I, we drafted him when he was young and he wasn't that great yet and we were winning. I can, he's going to tell him I can do this again. And I got to think, you know, he, he's an amazing football player. He's one of the best in the game on the defensive side of the ball. He covers a lot of holes for their team. He really does. You know, I know people point at mistakes and things like that, but as you heard me say many times this year, I mean, they ask him to do things at safety that no other safety in football gets asked to do. None. He can do everything. Linebacker, pull in guards, fill the hole, make a tackle, blitz off the edge, you know, runs around like his hair's on fire and tackles everybody, covering receivers 40 yards down the field, you know, matching up with the tight end, matching up with – he does everything. And for that defense, that is the Cam Chancellor position. And to me, it's, it's vital. That's why, you know, like we've talked about Derwin, that's why the Chargers drafted Derwin James. It's that same position. It's vital to make that scheme work. And I think, you know, they both got each other, you know, by the kahunas, for lack of a better phrase there, to where they love each other and they'll get something done. 10 o'clock in London. Hey, Hello. Not, not, not a worse phrase, although there are, there are worse phrases you could have used. So yes. uh, lack of a better, uh, definitely not lack of worse. Uh, so I, I, I feel like if they do trade Russell Wilson, we'll look back at the Jamal Adams trade and say they knew what was coming. You know, because – the pendulum has to swing back to defense. So you give up a couple of lower round picks to get Jamal Adams, knowing that you're going to replenish potentially, yeah. eventually, when you trade Russell Wilson. Um, you, you can't go all in on both sides of the right, ball. Right. You can't. You can't. No. Um, I think and, you're right, and Mike. They're clearly not all in on their on their offense. No. They're clearly not all in. Uh, so Mike, I, I, I just I, I hear I, you. Added to the fact that like, we talked about, you know, with like the Josh Allen rumors and the first pick of the draft and all those, that just tells you it's been on their radar. I mean, that's who he is, Pete Carroll. He want, I mean, he's still that way. That's why Russ wants out. He's just going, damn, okay, I give up. I give up. He wants to run the ball and play defense. That's what he wants to do. I, I played awesome. I was the best quarterback in football for eight, eight weeks. I had two games where I made a few mistakes 
and they went, ah, eh, we're going back to Pete's way. And I think he just was like, okay, that's it. So I, I, they're dying. I think they're itching to go back to that style of football. I really do. It's just whether they can, you know, figure out how to make these moves now is really the big question. That part of the story from The Athletic, when they had had two bad games, Russell Wilson had seven total turnovers. They had a short week coming up against the Cardinals. They right. were riding that emotion from the Hale Murray play, and Russell goes in with ideas on how to fix the offense, and they basically tell him, we'll handle that side of it, and he storms out of the room. That's all from The Athletic report. That was jarring to me because the Seahawks haven't said anything publicly. There's no way that came from Russell Wilson's camp. That came from the Seahawks, and I'm just kind of waiting for them to say something, to say anything. Yeah. I don't, you know, last week at the Combine, if we would have had a Combine, but all this stuff would have been hitting the fan with John Schneider speaking to the media, with Pete Carroll speaking to the media, and some of these other teams have done that. I just, I, I can't help but wonder whether or not the Seahawks are trying to delay that as long as they possibly can. Because they know right. that every question is going to be about Russ. Yeah, I, 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 I would expect, I would expect them to kind of just, you know, be quiet, lay in the weeds for now. They're going to and then to, trade him, and then if and, they do, yeah, if they do, or certainly they're going to exhaust all angles and do their homework and do that. You know, I don't think Pete Carroll and John Schneider are afraid to make aggressive moves either. Not that they're McVay or Les Snead, but they're certainly not scared to do what they got to do and kind of push the chips all in to where they want this team to go and all that. So. Yeah, this is to me the 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 story of the off season. It's Russell Wilson and and Deshaun Watson and what the hell happens with these two guys at quarterback. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.